going to get started here. Feel free and find a seat. Hello. All right. Uh, so first, uh, I would like to uh, say thank you to a couple of our sponsors. Uh, Atlassian uh, wants you to deliver fast and reliably with DevOps and Atlassian tools. Experience fewer failures and faster recovery by having developers and IT collaborate on Jira software and Jira service desk, tie automated builds, tests, and deployments together with Bamboo, and share knowledge with Confluence. Who uses any of those exactly? Uh, so, so you're already sold. Uh, also, uh, Civitas Learning uh, is a well-funded SaaS startup based uh, here in Austin, Texas that's uh, transforming higher education by using big data analytics to translate higher education data into uh, consumable recommendations delivered through SaaS solutions. Uh, they hire amazing engineers, give them the best tools and work environment, and surround them with a great team. Uh, so I guess buy it and or go work there is the, uh, is the takeaway message. And then our third one, Column Technologies, a privately held global technology uh, solutions firm. They uh, automate key DevOps principles and help customers meet today's digital transformation challenges. Who has a digital transformation challenge? Yeah, I, I don't know either, but uh, uh, quite so. So DevOps services uh, is the short form. Uh, good deal. Well, with that, we will uh, move into our next uh, next speaker, uh, Matt Ray, as uh, a longtime uh, Austinite. Uh, many of you have probably seen him before. Very active in the uh, DevOps community and a uh, resident chef expert. Uh, so we're happy to have him speaking uh, here at the event. Thanks. <coughs> so uh, yeah, let's kick it off. Um, today's talk: compliance as code. Uh, so, as Ernest said, I, I've been a uh, longtime Austin native. Uh, you know, I, I'm the director of partner integrations for Chef. Uh, that's me on Twitter. Um, I'm also uh, doing a podcast with uh, Mr. Cote downstairs and our friend Brandon Wichard. Could not get the uh, Jumbotron sponsorship. We made a lot of outreach, never pulled it off, so this is as close as we got. But uh, tune in. It's, uh, it's just us Austinites talking about tech and, and stuff. Uh, anyway, so, so I'm an application developer. You know, when I build applications, they go through the various stages of getting to production. You know, they start in development, uh, they go to QA, staging, you know, uh, and they go into production. That's, that's how I work. And, you know, I use Chef, so uh, I build locally uh, with uh, Test Kitchen, and I test out my infrastructure. And I, I believe in the idea of infrastructure as code. I, you know, everything is fully automated. And I use Chef Delivery to do continuous delivery of, of everything I have. And you know things are going great. I, I, I like how my infrastructure works. Uh, I understand what's going on. Uh, but then one day, you know, the auditor shows up. And uh, you know, we heard he's coming. And so we were a little nervous, but we're like, hey, all of our infrastructure is as code. You know, just point him at the, sh at the Chef repository and like, it's in Git. Just check it out, fork it. You know, you got it. And uh, everything's going to be great. How bad could it be? So he's like. Check this out, paper, uh, a lot of it. And it's thick, and uh, you need to read all of it and, and, and tell me that you uh, are compliant. Um, and I'm like, all right. So I start reading, and uh, we got some SSH controls. And I'm like, supports two different protocols. Uh, you know, don't use version one. Okay, that's the gist of this. Don't use version one. Okay, how am I going to verify this? You know, I'm a Unix guy. Scrap and save, right? So we fix it. Uh, we fix it in production. Um, and uh, it's a nice one-liner. And then he's like, Apache server uh, information leakage. You can't have people knowing that you're running Red Hat. Spy. <laughs> um, so you know you have to hide the, the operating system that you're running. And you can't let people know about that. So you're like, OK, I've read this. Uh, uh, OK. More grep instead, right? You know, we just look for the server tokens. And I'm, I'm good with the regex. You know, I, I, can, I can roll with that. And he's like, oh, we got this thing called Sys Compliance Benchmarks. And uh, this PDF is like two or 300 pages. And uh, you need to be Sys compliant. And uh, it just keeps getting worse, right? So, so PCI compliance, uh, PCI 1.0 spec came out in 2004. Uh, how many people are striving for PCI compliance, right? 
A and how many people think, what is this? I mean, you know, they're talking about you know, compliance things that don't make sense in this era of like Facebook and Twitter. Those things didn't exist when this came out. But you, know, you, still have to, you still have to be compliant with those. And things keep getting worse, or, or better. You know, it depends on how you think about it. Um, but it, you know, it, it took forever. Uh, we, we, we got our compliance, our, our audit out of the way. And we, we were happy because we knew the guy wouldn't be back for six months, right? <laughs> um, and you know, they, they were like, well, seriously, we should, you know, the security team said, well, we should, we should have a security review as part of the release process, right? You know, we'll, we'll make sure that your code's secure before you push it to production. And when I hear security review, I think, now there's somebody in between me and continuous delivery. I've got somebody trying to slow down the release of code. Now, instead of being able to release, you know, several times a day, uh, they want to make sure we do reviews, and they're people, and they're going to be slow, and you know my my daily releases turn into weekly, and things just get slower and slower as these guys, you know, they break the link between staging and production because now there's a wall between these guys. But we still have to make sure things are secure. So now they're like, well, we'll just scan things when they're in production. We'll 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 keep an eye out, and, and you know we'll we'll look at at how things are going, and uh, you know you kind of forget to do it because it's still a manual process and they only do it when they know the auditors are coming. So n the sustainability is really low for, for, for this uh, procedure. So you know, uh, Verizon came out with a PCI compliance re uh, report that said uh, you know, two thirds of organizations did not adequately test the security of their systems. And uh, essentially like you know, OMB, the Office of uh, uh, Personnel Management, you know, there was that hack, Primera, Anthem, Target, Home Depot, you know, essentially everybody knows they need to be more secure, but they don't spend any additional money or resources, or they're spending more, but they're still behind, and get it catching up is, you know, they're not catching up. So sustainability is really low. Um, they, you know, they, they have these big initiatives, but uh, they don't really follow through. The good news is you'll never have to pay for credit watch services again. Um, <laughs> so, you know, the, the, the you know, the, the output of this is, you know, we've got thousands of pages of reports and, you know, it, it routine, routinely people are going to ignore them or it becomes a fire drill, you know, whenever the auditors are coming. And, you know, most, most of the time it's this kind of, yeah, you pass, you know, or you fail until you pass. And it's, you don't really have a good idea of, of how scientific your audits are. You know, it's just like, well, you pass. And, you know, they show up and six months later, uh, and say, are you still following this, you know, pamphlet of paper? Like, well, my shelf scripts, they've gotten a little brittle. Um, turns out if you, you know, put a space in there, the protocol, it's still logical code, but my shelf script broke. Um, so the regex needed some tuning. And, you know, I'm using Chef, so I believe in, you know, having infrastructure code. And I, I could code it the right way the first time if I knew I needed to do that. You know, so maybe I need to get my security guys writing Chef code? That seems a little troublesome. Um, I mean, it's Chef's easy, but uh, <laughs> you know, I, I can't expect everyone to, to be uh, you know, writing infrastructure code. So what we have is a communications problem. We've got you know, the, the auditors, uh, they've got their big binder of paper. Uh, we've got our security guys who are just looking for regexes. And you know, we've got the DevOps folks who you know, they're writing infrastructure code in Ruby. Um, let's, let's take a break and think about what we're talking about here. So security is not the same as compliance. You know, um, security is, is getting your applications into a secure state and ensuring that uh, you know, you've written your code properly so it's not you know, leaking, uh, you know, leaking credentials or leaking memory. You, you know, the, the, the what, what compliance is looking for is that you're actually doing the things that security says you're supposed to do. So uh, compliance builds on, on this foundation of security. You know, security is, you know, you wrote good code, you keep all your patches up to date, you know, you, it's, uh, it's the quality of it. And compliance is just the checks. You know, we're saying, yeah, you wrote write good code, we're gonna make sure that, you know, the ports are, are closed, you know. Um, and so they go hand in hand. And uh, compliance activities aren't just about making auditors go away. Um, and there's a lot to, to compliance. You know, you need to check for things like who's got access to systems, that the processes and workflows are being respected. And you know, it's, it's all these things, but how do you prove it? It's still a really fuzzy kind of thing. And you know, one of our beliefs uh, at Shep and you know, a lot of other 
uh, proponents of infrastructure as code is, is that you know, humans on machines, that's not really a great pattern. It's not scalable, it's not re reproducible, and it's not testable. So you know, the future is, is clearly humans acting on code and computers putting it on machines, right? Uh, and that's, that's what Chess does, that's what Puppet does, that's what Ansible does. I mean, that's what we're all here to get to is no more humans on machines because humans can't touch 10,000 machines, 100,000 machines, you know, on and on. Um, and humans have fingers at that. But you know, when we talk about DevOps, we're, you know, there's often this tension of you know, it's the culture, not the tools. But you know, it's not about the tools, it's about the culture. But when you choose the tools, they reinforce the culture uh, that you want and the mindsets that you want. So you want the security people working with you. You, you don't want these, these uh, silos, these barriers between teams. You want everyone working towards the same goals. And so how do you do that? You need better tools. So our goal, uh, for the purposes of compliance, is to get everybody using the same language. You know, a common language in code that would allow all the audiences, compliance, security, DevOps, uh, to collaborate on things that go on your systems. That's what InSpec is. So uh, I'm here today to talk to you about compliance as code and InSpec. Uh, InSpec is a compliance language. Um, you have things like uh, you're defining your controls, the the impact of them, the title. You know, this maps to our little uh, our big binder full of paper. We're saying, hey, uh, protocol version SSH v2. You got a nice description there, and you, know, you can't use the pointer. But essentially, you know, we're just saying, hey, SSH v config. The protocol should be two, not one. Pretty simple. It's not you know, it's not hardcore coding. It's fairly understandable. There's no regexes in there. Um, you know, it's it's a nice uh, DSL for for your auditors. Uh, so, you know, InSpec is one language that works on Linux, uh, works on Windows. So let's say we're doing some Windows controls. We've got uh, NTLM v2 authentication enabled. Uh, you know, here's the, the description for what that means. Here's where you go to check for it. Uh, you put this code in there, you know, an auditor, he knows what he's looking for. So he knows, he, you know, go open reg edit. Oh, there it is. Yep. It's good. Now it's in code. You know, uh, works on BSDs, Solaris, AIX. Uh, comes with a whole bunch of available resources. Uh, these are the ones that are built in. Um, you know, there are more coming all the time. It's open source. So that's what's great about it. Uh, InSpec is not intrusion detection. It is not, you know, a, a firewall system. It's not an antivirus. Uh, it's not a pen testing tool. You know, it's just ensuring that what your auditors are looking for are happening in your infrastructure. Uh, it does bare metal. It does VMs, it does containers. Uh, inspec looks like this when you run it from the command line. You say inspec exec test RB. It finishes in uh, less than 0 .1, 0 0.01 seconds. Um, and this is just running our SSH test, right? Uh, run it locally, uh, run it via SSH. Inspec exec test RB, uh, there's our, our key, SSH and into a box. There's no agent involved in inspec. This is not the same thing as chat. This is a separate remote scanner. It actually has, uh, remotely goes in, connects to the machine via SSH with our credential there, um, and runs this test. Uh, it's pretty fast. Um, same for Windows, connects via WinRM. You know, there's no Ruby, there's no agent on the system. Just WinRM connect, uh, see what's going on in the box, as well as Docker. So uh, inspect exec test, uh, connect to the Docker uh, container. Again, no agent uh, on the container, no Ruby. Um, you know, no barrier to scanning 40,000 machines to see if they're compliant. Uh, it does nodes. Uh, I, I had to mention it does grub. Uh, one of our developers like, oh yeah, well, you know, we wanted to make sure that we were only booting the right operating systems. I'm like, okay, uh, that's good to have. Uh, it does databases, so you can connect to a MySQL session and ensure that there aren't additional users on a system. Pretty handy, um, especially if, uh, you know, you've got humans on those boxes, and they're like, you know what, I'm going to need a user later. Let me just throw some stuff on here. Um, you know, it's a good way to, to find out what's on your systems. Uh, test your endpoints. Test your APIs. You know, go and ensure that uh, when you're on a Azure box um, that your security, uh, security groups are properly implemented. Um, nice check to have if you're running a bunch of infrastructure in the cloud. You know, you'd, you'd trust, but verify. Uh, so it has great operating system and application coverage. 
Uh, it, you know, we do you know, RHEL and Ubuntu and Sled and, and Oracle Linux. Uh, Windows support is, is top notch. Uh, IBM actually contributed a lot of the AIX code. Um, Oracle contributed some of the Solaris code uh, and the Oracle Linux. Uh, and so you know, we're continuing to expand system and application coverage. So a lot of stuff is built in. Uh, what, what's kind of nice about it is if something's not built in, you can just exec and regex if you need to, you know, or you can send a patch, and send more, uh, send more uh, uh, checks. Uh, inspect works with Kitchen Inspect. So uh, if you're familiar with Chef Tooling, uh, we have a nice plugin called Test Kitchen. Uh, the way Test Kitchen works is it uh, creates a virtual machine or a cloud instance or even a physical box, uh, depending on which plugin you're using copies over the tools you're going to need to that system, um, copies over the application or infrastructure code that you want to test. So in the example of Chef, we're copying a Chef cookbook onto it. We're testing that cookbook to make sure that you know, when I say install IIS or install SQL Server, that it actually puts the box in the right configuration to the settings that we want. Um, and it you know, does Linux and Windows and, and, and BSDs. Uh, ensures everything's in that state. And now we can run inspect on that system. So we can have our audits with our code and test infrastructure before it gets to, you know, the, uh, before it leaves development. So developers can test their compliance on their machines. The, the real advantage of that is now compliance, instead of being an afterthought, is at the left, the far left side of the pipeline where the developers are. So when you say, hey, you got to de deploy things in PCI, you know, the developers are like, well, I'm doing this, I'm doing this, and oh, oh, that's going to make me not PCI compliant. They don't push it into production. You know, it's not going to, or it's not going into QA, to dev, to pre-production, waiting for that audit scan. Now it's just part of the pipeline, and, and that's really exciting. And, you know, it, it's fairly simple to test. Uh, if we were writing a, a, an SSH tester, you know, we could use Chef Generate to create a cookbook, switch into it, uh, edit our kitchen YAML, converge it, that means bring up the system, uh, remove the, the test we're not going to use, make a, an inspect test, and write this. You know, this, is our, this is our code. You know, hey, we want to make sure our SSHD config protocol should be two, right? Um, and we run kitchen verify, and it's like, oh, no, this machine is out of compliance. So we log into it with kitchen login. We edit the SSHD config because it shipped wrong by default, and we, you know, manually fix it. This is uh, for demo purposes. Um, and then we kitchen verify, and now we pass. So we say, oh, we learned a valuable lesson there. This box comes out of the box incorrectly configured. We'll go and update our infrastructure code accordingly so this doesn't happen when we roll it out. Uh, so Inspect uh, was open source last year. Uh, we, won, we won a Black Duck Open Source Rookie of the Year Award. Uh, Inspect also supports Ansible, supports Puppet, um, you know, not just Chef. So it's a, it's a very generally useful open source tool. Uh, we also have support for uh, sharing compliance profiles on Supermarket. So the, the Chef community site is called Supermarket. Uh, we share, you know, a couple thousand cookbooks there, a uh, bunch of, you know, other tools. Uh, so people are slowly starting to share compliance profiles. Um, you know, there's a hardening OS one. Uh, there was a, a, a group called uh, Hardening.io, and that's where this project came from. Um, we acquired about half of the company that was involved in that. So that's where it came from, but it's open source. Um, so we actually have kind of a commercial uh, product that goes with that uh, called Chef Compliance. Uh, has a remote, you know, it takes the, the remote scanning, weaponizes it, so you have a nice big centralized dashboard to go and hit 40,000 machines see the, the state of your infrastructure, export it into Splunk or you know, wherever you need to send it. Um, we also commercially have PCI compliance, you know, uh, sys benchmarks, and uh, it will import SCAP uh, format, which is Microsoft's format for like SCCM. So if you've already got a lot of Windows infrastructure and a lot of audits already written, we can take those triplicate XML written files and import them straight into Inspect, and it you know, takes XML, turns it into Ruby DSL. It's pretty nice. Sys benchmarks, they're open, um, openly available, huge XML files, uh, but uh, easy to convert. Sorry. So that's, that's your commercial pitch. Um, but all the pieces are open source. So you know, you, you're more than happy to, 
to help you out with that. So now that we have inspect, you know, how do we, we move that back into our development workflow? You know, what, is, what does that look like? Well, we've got one language and one workflow. So we put inspect into our test infrastructure. We put it into test kitchen. We're now testing things. Uh, we can also add, uh, Chef has the concept of an audit cookbook. So when we have the Chef client run, configure the system, the things that we were scanning for previously to make sure that uh, they were working, we can have a compliant, a, an audit cookbook that actually runs that inspect code. So we can have the Chef node run two separate ru uh, uh, run lists. One could just be the configuration and one could be the audits. You know, we could you know, check, do an audit run daily or you know, every six hours, depending on how we feel, while we're or we can do them at the same time. So one language, one workflow. So our new workflow, we've got scanning up in the front. Uh, we've got you know, the local de development and testing got the build and CI and CD, uh, and then remediation with Chef and verification at the end. So it's all one uh, continuous workflow. And of course, you know, with, with Chef, uh, we have a holistic view of everything and it all ties together uh, neatly. So applications, runtimes, and infrastructure all get deployed together um, with all your different stakeholders. Uh, inspect is up on GitHub, uh, github.com, Chef, Inspect. Inspect.io has a lot of uh, introduction tutorials. I, d I think it's approaching 1.0, um, so it'll be hitting 1.0 really soon. It's Apache licensed. Lots of people are already taking it and running with it. Uh, it has its origins related to server spec, but it's a separate code base, not fork. Um, but if you're using server spec, it's really easy to port over. So uh, one more reminder, ChefConf is here in Austin this year going to be downtown at the JW Marriott in July, uh, and that's all I got. Any questions? I went pretty fast. <laughs> so, question in the back. Yes. Yes. So, so the question is, if you're running uh, the Open Source Chef server, can you get compliance as a, as a product? Um, the open source chef server is the same as the commercial chef server. So they're no longer separate products. We open sourced everything on the chef, you know, part of uh, this diagram. Uh, uh, yeah, that one. Uh, whatever. Um, ev it's gone. <laughs> yeah. The chef, is, uh, the chef server and all those pieces are open source now. So uh, there's no difference in the code bases. And um, adding commercial products into that is, is really simple. Um, but yeah, uh, compliance is part of that. Uh, chef delivery is, is another part of that. It's a CI CD product. And of course it ties all together and gives you nice reports and analytics like you know, the business type like. So that's, uh, that's uh, what we do. Um, but again, inspect, the scanner, those are all open source. So you could stand it up for yourself. So uh, anything else right here? Sure, you, you, you could run inspect from wherever. Uh, I mean, you saw the command line. Um, it is uh, it's included in the Chef DK, the Chef Development Kit. So, you know, it's a Ruby application, but we have the Chef Development Kit, which is a full installer of everything you need as a developer. A lot of people put that into their CI CD as the tool, so it just gives you a working Chef and all this Chef tooling, including inspect. So you don't have to worry about like, oh, what version of Ruby is my distro running? Or how am I gonna get Ruby onto Windows 2003? Right, Inspect will be included in that, so you know, and you can just put it onto Jenkins, you can put it onto Cruise Control, whatever you're using for CI/CD, just call it shell out to it. You know. Yes. Well, the the time that it saves you and the fact that. You know, once you build something into your, your workflow, you know, it's a continuous burn. You know, I mean, it's, it's continual friction as opposed to you know, these spiky walls that you run into where you know, everyone freaks out for a month to do this compliance check and then they forget about it for five months and then they freak out again. Um, and so if you build it into your, your infrastructure, you're always compliant. You're always able to you know, release uh, as you go. Yes, there is some barrier to entry as you turn paper into code, but once you've done that, and you know, we're happy to help you with some starter kits, 
Um, once you've done that, it's built in, right? And then instead of having you know the monthly freak out twice a year, you know, you're like, oh yeah, it's good. It's built into our, our workflow, and your auditors can say, well, you know, they can go in and tweak it after the fact instead of like showing up with a bunch of scanning tools and you know saying, how did this get here? And you guys fight, and now it's like, hey, it's always it's always compliant. Let's go to the pub, right? Um, that's the goal, <laughs> to, to get away from computers. Um, yes. Yes. Right, right. Well, so so we're not. We are definitely not a replacement for a security scanner. I mean, this is a compliance check. Like, you know, that's where Chef could come in, and Chef says, you know, SSH server not running. You know, and just make sure things are turned off, or uh, you know, a a proper security tool that is looking for things that are open or ports that are open. You know, compliance is going to check the state of your infrastructure. Um, I believe it, it has a process checker, so it can look for things running. Uh, that's actually a good question. I, um, but you know, Chef can fix that. A security tool can fix that. Compliance can probably check for it. If it doesn't, I can't see how that'd be hard to add. No, it's not. It's not a security replacement. It's it's the compliance check, right? So, uh, any other questions, or we wrapping up? You pointing at Wicket? <laughs> you pointing at you? <laughs> all right. Uh, thanks a lot, everybody. Uh, see you all at ChefCon. All right. Thank you, Matt. Well, uh, good news, we have uh, gotten back on schedule. So uh, coming up next in this room, Why Analytics Fail by Dr. Betts Nichols. Uh, that'll be good talk. Uh, in the other room, we have orchestrating multi-container apps and fail-proof ways to run beautiful tests, uh, regardless of browser choice. And Cloud Austin will be uh, hosting up in the user group room. And I think I'm out of announcements. Everybody doing doing good? All right. Uh, we will get kicked off at 11:45. So you got 15 minutes. Can grab a grab a drink, go kick a vendor, try to get swag out of them. <laughs>